Welcome back, everyone, to Story Dive. All you people on the train that are on the cars behind us thus far. Yeah, our train's growing by the day, and we appreciate all that growing. But today we got some excellent stuff going on. We have an excellent guest coming in to this uh, podcast today. First time for Story Dive. So congrats to everyone involved. Yeah, the listeners, to, to me and the... Yeah, everything. <laughs> Everyone involved, welcome. Uh, thanks for being here. I can now introduce. Uh, oh, help me, Logan. Um, today we have a special guest. It's not just the two of us here on the train today. Um, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah. Hi. Um, my name is Lauren Blaney. Uh, thank you for welcoming me on this this really cool train we got happening here yeah it's a very, very train like you're very welcome yeah it's a pretty comfy train we've been on here for quite a while now so <laughs> i'm quite impressed at least two months yeah, almost yeah uh you know every now and it's then we get to walk. we get to stretch our legs every now and then uh shout outs to our new show in between go check that out um but yeah so lauren what is your story what would you say uh is your story thus far like how would you describe yourself and what you do yeah so i have been freelancing in film for a little over a year and um my story man i it's it's hard to say i mean i guess um even as a kid and even like growing up and things like i've always been fascinated in storytelling and movies and like how stories can move us and change mm. people and really like touch hearts, touch minds. Like it's always been such a fascinating thing to me. And so um, I really got into it um, in high school, my senior year, I took a video production class and um, I made like a documentary on a, a haunted house place. And I ended up um, entering it into a little festival thing that they did for the high school. And I got third place for the, wow. the documentary. And so that was no really way. Like, yeah, it was so much fun. That is um, so cool. That's, <laughs> that's what really kicked me off to it. Um, and so I think that's what started the passion and just, you know, not last year, but the year before I, um, just really started to, pick up that drive to start in film and see what I could do. And now I'm on my way to become a writer and director in film. Wow. That is, that is awesome. Like, honestly, like everything you were saying is like the essence of what this podcast is about. Like the whole point. Yeah. yeah like the whole point of starting this podcast was to kind of just like, uh, not, not just for ourselves, but for everyone else listening, like we want to show people that stories are just more than books. They're more than, even movies like i feel like it, stories are you know people's lives put into a creative thing or like like artwork or whatever you know but it's like you can make a story out of anything and uh i'm really interested in kind of your experiences that you've been going through uh in the movie industry because there's so much that goes into movies um and i'm wondering just how much of that is related to necessarily storytelling and all that stuff. So um, we do have some questions that uh, me and Kai have come up with for you. So I'll have him start off. Indeed. Um, and we can yeah. kind of go through those and, you know, uh, feel free to chime in whenever and let us know. So Awesome. Um, yeah. I guess when you did your high school film thing, did you 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 had any professional experience prior to that or how different was that experience from like the you know professionally working on film sets and stuff oh entirely different and if you'll let me i'll tell you the the funny story behind that yes <laughs> um, please go for it it was we're all so, about those stories yeah it was it's kind of funny because um <clears throat> it was uh me and my friends like went to this haunted house place it's called castle of chaos it's like mm. clear up in midvale um but um it was just like a super like fun haunted house and i thought they had like a really cool concept to all of their like haunted house things and and so i just decided um for that assignment that i would go and i do 
the documentary on that. And I had zero plan going in. Um, I kind of just showed up and asked around. I was like, hey, like, are there some actors I can talk to? And um, so I ended up getting some interviews of just the actors of that, like, haunted house place. And then I got some B-roll of me just going through the haunted house. I I got permission from the owner. I kind of just asked on a whim and decided to do it. And uh, so and I spent way too long editing it and putting it together for mm. this class. But it was like just so much fun. Like I, I had more passion behind it because I was excited to like share that experience. Um, but when we showed it in class, um, my teacher was like really drilling down this point of like having a plan for where you're going and and what you're doing and he looks at me and he goes like you probably had like a a real plan of what you were doing when you went to this haunted house and I just like (laughs) looked at him and shook my head I was like no no I had no idea what I was doing I kind of just went and did it so um I think you know there's a couple things that go to show from that story and I think um part of it is that your passion can carry you a little bit um Mm -hmm. when you like Uh really have like the the drive and you're really excited about something you tend to do a lot better on it um so i wouldn't recommend going into something without a plan but i would definitely say that um passion and drive helps you create the things that you want to create yeah that's that's beautiful uh it's a great takeaway honestly i i think passion does go a long way and you know when you're Sometimes I think it's good to hop in sometimes blind because sometimes you don't know what you really want out of something until you mm-hmm. hop in and kind of like throw some stuff at the wall and see what sticks. Um, but yeah. I, I also think if you want to do something long term, I think that's when the plan's really important. Um, but yeah, that is that is so cool that you were able to kind of just like make that happen because you just cared so much about it. And yeah, as someone that has edited things uh myself i i totally understand like the the feeling of like especially when it's like your first thing that you've really like done like put out there uh you really want to like put as much time into it as possible um so i I totally understand that yeah editing is so cool too like i um i'm not the best at editing but when i do edit it's like fun to see like how the final product turned out so what kind of things do you edit like what do you Oh, um, so me and Kai actually, we, we started a YouTube channel. It was like right after I met him, we, we, we both worked at the same job and we were just in this mind space where we just wanted to like stop working nine to five, whatever jobs. And we wanted to go out and like make things. So we made this like super off the wall, wacky YouTube channel with a bunch of friends. And we did that for about six months. So that was my first real experience editing. Um, but I'm I'm pretty proud of the videos I put out there. There was there was a lot of long days of editing and uh, me just like looking up YouTube tutorial after YouTube tutorial to learn um, because I I cared so much about like putting something out that I was like you know proud of and uh, you know since then I haven't done too much. Um, I've done a little bit here and there, but I, I am the one currently editing the podcast. Uh, not to break the fourth wall too much, but. Um, <gasps> just kidding but yeah uh I've, I, i'm still learning the trains stuff. exposed i'm still i'm still learning <laughs> stuff to this day um so uh but yeah uh it's i don't know editing is it's a necessary evil in some ways but it's also like a it's it's a way of telling stories in and of itself you know it could be it's a whole to- its own topic of like you know uh how an editor can express uh, storytelling so Definitely. Yeah. There was a director that I knew that um, says that you tell a story three times. Once Ah. in writing, uh, the second time in filming it, and then the third time in editing. So it's a whole different project and it's a whole different story within those three different stages. And I think that that's so true. I love that. I feel like I need to write that down. We need to get that engraved <laughs> yeah. like on the side of the train I like need, i need like on like a t-shirt that. i need to wear that well so uh in case anyone hasn't guessed yet our topic for the most part today is film sets and and uh kind of the the medium of movie making mm. as it were yeah and since you you have a lot of uh very it seems like recent experience you've 
it's been the last whole year, right, of, of freelancing? Mm -hmm. It's so very awesome. So all of your experiences. <laughs> okay. But but you'd say it's like the most recent it gets, you know? Yeah. When was the last movie that you worked on? Um, the last feature film that I worked on was uh, back in September and a little into October. It's actually coming out for the uh, Zion's Indie Film Fest this oh, cool. month. Uh, so I'm really are, are, pumped are, are, about that. Are you allowed to disclose like what it is? Are you keeping it vague? Um, um, I can talk about some things. Uh, okay, you don't have like, to if you don't want to. I just want to make sure we're not like exposing information that is like uh, supposed to be good, kept under good. wraps. Okay. No, I can talk about like things that have already like been revealed and and stuff. So okay. it's called The Faith of Angels. Uh, look it up. It's going to be a great movie. <laughs> um, but it's uh, directed by Garrett Batty. And he did uh, like Saratoga Approach, if you've seen that. Mm. So it's more of like a faith building uh, movie. Okay. Cool. And that one was really fun because we, we got to film up in the mines. Oh, and um, it, was just, it was just a very interesting story and very like faith inspiring story so i'm not sure how much i'm allowed to like talk about the the plot and different things yet right um but just know that it's a good one <laughs> hey yeah i totally trust that sounds awesome like filming up in mind sounds super it sounds hard but it also sounds really like really cool to do it was i mean like base camp was all the way like down at the bottom and then you had to like climb up the mountain and then cross some mine tracks to actually get oh to gosh. set <laughs> and so it was nuts we had to, you know shuttle up our actors via the razor you know and yeah it was just it, it definitely Man. had its challenges but it was like a lot of fun in the end and you know it was up in Tooele County so it was in the middle of nowhere but it was like really beautiful too yeah that's so that's actually cool. that's uh, so I have spent it's interesting as you're saying of this some of the lingo you're using it's like coming back to me again in a haze in a fog <laughs> just like here and there I'm like wait a minute I do know what that I know what she's talking about so uh this does though as you're talking about this it kind of reminds me of one of the questions we wanted to ask um just for people who like don't have any experience whatsoever Let's say, not that they've never seen a movie, but they've never seen a behind-the-scenes thing ever. They've never laid eyes on a camera, right? <laughs> How would you describe your, like, your vocation to them? Because it's like you've done several different things, right? You've done, uh, you've been part of different departments within the film industry. So, what would you yeah. describe the set to be like? Um, it's very different every single time. And uh, I mean, one of the things that I actually love about film is that it is different every day. Mm. Um, like I'll tell you about this, this last feature that we did. Um, there was, uh, like at one point we had a dog on set. And so that, um, you know, you have to bring like an animal wrangler, somebody yeah. who can, you know, watch over the animal, take care of the animal, make sure that the animal is uh, doing things that need to be done in the scene. Um, and then, you know, sometimes you have like props and different things that are different for different days. I said different a lot in that sentence. Um, but yeah, but it, it, it's um, true though. <laughs> yeah, like I, I talked to the prop master one day and he like had these things that looked like rocks. And I was like, what? Like, what is this? Like, tell, tell me about what's going on. And um, he had made these rocks um, have to, they have to be edible for the actor because the actor um, is biting down onto a rock in oh, one scene. Man. And you'll have to, you'll have to see the movie to know oh what God. I'm talking about. Yeah, now but, I'm intrigued. Um, what the, in the world? <laughs> you're somehow, you're somehow making rocks sound appetizing. And I don't know, yeah, I, I don't no, know how you're doing it, rocks. but. Yeah, no, he made it out of white chocolate. So. Oh my very, God. I want, he just I want melted some rocks. down white chocolate. Yeah. And, uh, and I think he, he said he added some like cereal and stuff for texture, but it like looked like a convincing rock. And so that was just a, a cool thing. You know, you just, oh. there's cool things that happen on set. Yeah. That you don't yeah. get an experience in, um, in other things. Yeah. That's a story in and of Dang. itself. Edible rock. 
Mm -hmm. the edible rocks yeah, I, yeah that's so, a step into a universe i never yeah, thought it's, about it's funny because uh i one of my questions uh was i it, it was kind of a funny question but i was going to ask you what the food is like when you're working on movies because I, I i've seen you know on tv shows they have like food with or uh, tables with like all sorts of food that like everybody's asking for or whatever like they just keep refilling your food and drink and everything um uh, which is funny because like you just talked about how this guy made rocks edible but yeah <laughs> but yeah maybe maybe you could talk a little bit about that uh i know it's not necessarily story related but i'm just personally curious no it's fine um yeah it just depends on your caterer you know they'll they'll hire um just different people from different like a uh um, like I actually did a little bit of assistant catering uh, for this couple that I knew. They were called the Flat Fox, and they were just they were just so fun. Um, oh, but yeah, um, and I actually love like being able to eat on set because then you don't have to figure out what you're, what you're eating for dinner that night. So right. it's super nice. Um, they also have crafty tables. It's it's called crafty. So. Um, when I first heard that term, I thought like, oh, craft, like, like, you, like I'm making crafts or something. Oh. Um, no, crafty is like this, the a film lingo term. And basically all it means is the snack table. So mm, they'll have somebody okay. who's in charge of that. And that's something separate from catering. So um, you're actually pretty well fed on set at all times because um, you have uh, breakfast some of the time they'll, they'll have if, if you're one of the people who gets there really early um and then they'll have crafty that's set out the whole time and it's always being replenished with snacks and candy and and everything we got sodas and things um and then we'll have a, a set time for uh catering and we'll have lunch and it's usually about like a 30 minute lunch um and yeah yeah that's how that that side rolls dude that is awesome i mean Cause like, is that like every day too? Like, are there days yeah. where you have to worry about getting food yourself or like every um, single time? No, I mean, it does depend on, um, what you're working for. Sometimes they have like a really low budget. I know that like, um, the only time that like I've had to worry about getting my own food was when I was an extra and they mm. still handed me like a, a like, uh, gift card or or they no they handed me cash and they just said okay like go ahead and find your own food wow, okay. uh, but that was that was the only time i had to worry about it all you know they're That's always awesome. feeding me yeah it's like i've had a few experiences where i i have catering uh during certain events and things that i'm working at but um it's like i feel like when you're when your needs are taken care of like that where you don't have to worry about that it just gives you so much more room to like be invested and like it like makes you i don't know like for me it, i'm just like super happy because i don't have to worry about that so like all my whole being can like be way more dedicated to the creative cause and everything so oh, I don't, absolutely. yeah honestly it's like food food's honestly very important um in when it comes to being in the right creative mindset i think so that's super cool i'm glad in, that you guys it, are taken care of like that yeah yeah in in my memory Crafty's always filled to the brim with like caffeine stuff because oh, yeah. <laughs> like sometimes the shoots can go shoots meaning like the days of just like a singular day of shooting specific shots throughout the day. I I don't in my experience the longest I ever went was for 13 hours straight. Wow. Mm -hmm. Um did you ever have a day longer than that or Oh yeah. Oh, we'll be competing. Um, when you do go I'm over, um, normally it's 12 hour days. Um, and when you go over that, you'll get what's just called overtime. And so they'll give you, it's like time and a half, or I, I don't know what the math is on it, but um, you do get some extra money for being there. I think, I think it was for the Faith of Angels one that I was. Those ones were supposed to be 10 hour days, but we went overtime a lot. <laughs> um, but it's worth it, you know, like the end product. And when you see it, like you're like, okay, this is why we do it, you know? Yeah. So exactly. I, I, I went to like this rap party after um, 
the after we finished filming and we wrapped um wrapped just means we're done with right. the filming portion of it um you, and didn't, you didn't have like rappers at the party no like... we had m&m there and... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, just... that'd, be a, that'd be a crazy um... rap party <laughs> no they read to the bounce house and everything <laughs> yeah no but um mm. at the rap party we ended up like seeing um just like this little wheel of the movie and they you know put like a song to it and it was it was basically kind of like a trailer sort of but it wasn't a trailer mm. it was like just kind of showing some of the work that they had done up there on set and um for this one i was at base camp a lot meaning like base camp is kind of where the actors will go through hair and makeup and wardrobe and um i don't know some different things happen down at base camp you have production mm. managers and the second ad and things like that um and it, it's a little bit of a separate world from set um but i was i was down working at base camp for a lot of this one and so to see what they had captured on the camera up there was super cool because i hadn't seen a lot of that side of it for the movie and so like that moment when i saw the rap reel i was like this is so cool and i said this is why we do it i turned to the the second ad who i worked very closely with and i was like this is why we do it and it was just just a nice warm fuzzy feeling that you get yeah yeah i mean i don't know i i think you said it perfectly like, i agreed um i do remember it being super rewarding by the end of it but you do bring it as you're talking about like uh ad's and stuff can you give us like a run through of like what people like if, if someone has never walked on set they have no idea how to navigate it what do you really expect to see because you're mentioning different departments like a makeup department and uh, mm -hmm. in my memory there's like a sound department and the director department but then there's the producer department which is different like yeah. so i don't know can you can you give us a run through of that sure yeah um so there are different departments on set and they all have um, different tasks that uh, all come into the one goal of making the movie, right? Um, so production is mostly where I have at, have been at. And uh, production means uh, the director, who is um, the person who's in charge of kind of the creative decision making. Um, he talks mostly to the DP and the actors. Um, I'll get to DP in a minute. <laughs> um, and then uh, we have the producer. They deal with a lot of the money. Uh, they deal with uh, some creative decisions as well. Um, and then we have, let's see, who else is in production? We have uh, the first AD and the second AD. AD just stands for assistant director. Mm. Um, so most people think that it's the director that is um, the one, you know, calling all the shots and and telling everyone exactly what to do on set, but that's actually not true. Um, the first AD is the person who is um, calling uh, pictures up, we're rolling, you know, everybody quiet down. Oh. So because the director needs to have his focus completely on the performances of the actors, he can't be yelling at the rest of the crew. So the first AD is um, a big part because he'll be, uh, the one who's calling all the shots and taking care of things kind of behind the scenes and allowing the director to to focus on yeah. performance. I mean, um, I mean and that, then, that makes sense, though, because it's assistant mm -hmm. director. So he's like his whole job is to assist the director in being right. able to focus on what he wants. So yeah, yeah. yeah, that does make sense. Yeah. Um, and then also in production is the second AD um, for this last shoot that I did or feature film that I did. Um, I was an AD intern, and so I worked really closely with the second AD and learned a lot of what his role was. Um, he will work mostly down at, like, base camp, uh, which is, like, the base area. I don't know how else to describe it. Um, so you have base camp, and then you have set, and those are okay. always, like, two different areas, and sometimes they're kind of the same area. <laughs> Um, Does base camp ever move? He, Is base camp like always the same place, and then the set will move, or? 
Um, it just depends on where you're at for, for the day. So, um, you know, we, we still moved around for the shoot, but for most of the time we were in Ophir, Utah, is, that is the place in Tooele with the mines that we shot. Mm. Um, and so that always stayed the same. But when we went to shoot somewhere else, uh, like, you know, we had a, a diner setting and we had a, um, like two different home settings. So it will change um, based on that, but they try to keep base camp and set very close to each other uh, within like walking distance. Um, Right, okay. But yeah, second second AD works on the call sheet. He um, is the communication between base camp and set. Um, he helps get the actors ready, helps them uh, get through uh, hair and makeup because, you know, actors have to, uh, depending on, you know, their role and, and what's happening in the movie, like for this mine one, we had to dirty them up quite a bit. Uh, so makeup would be in charge of that. Um, and then they also have their wardrobe, which is just clothes and what, what they're wearing, what their character is wearing for mm. the, the set that day. So that's production side of it. I can get into the other departments if you want me to. But <laughs> Wow. Dude, there's so much. Like, guys, this is there's what so it much. takes to make a lot of the stories that people see around the world. Like, I mean, uh, this is just movies, too. Like, uh, you know, everything has a process, but man there's so much that goes into it that people do not realize you know so i thank you oh, so much for for explaining all that mm -hmm. yeah um the other departments i'll just name what they are i won't go through the roles because we might be here a lot but um <laughs> there is also <laughs> uh there's also art department they're like set decorating and um in charge of you know props and different things and then there's uh the uh grip uh they they're in charge of all of like the stands that they put up for the big uh, you know lighting rigs any just rigs that need to be done um and then there's electric sometimes grip and electric are the same crew depending on the budget of okay. your your film yeah, that um, makes sense. so electric is lighting and then uh of course you have your camera department and they're they're in charge of camera stuff so yeah there's there's a few departments and and everybody works to make the whole thing work yeah and where do you fall under all the things you listed like what would you say your job title is um i have mostly been a production assistant okay, so that's right what that means is you're just the gopher for production um you just help wherever it needs help um i do hope to like try different things for different um departments and stuff yeah. um is, is there one and, that you're you particularly know, wanting yeah. to go into or are you trying to figure that out still um yeah i i really love the creative side of things um so i really heavily heavily lean into wanting to be a director and a writer mm -hmm. uh however right now i i might want to try my hand at art a little more um, oh, cool. because I think, you know, decorating the set, figuring out props, that's also a very creative venture. Yes. So that's where I like to be. Cool. Well, uh, Kai did, uh, were there any other questions that you had Kai on like, um, the whole production side of stuff before we move into maybe the more oh, no, story that... based questions? We got it covered. I'm, I'm sitting with some cookies in my hand and oh, like nice, i'm having a good time <laughs> that's i wish i had good. cookies in my hand either okay. way i'm just listening i'm like totally captured by this this to, to a lot of people this almost sounds like a mystical place where <laughs> yeah. magic is made you know yeah. so as you're explaining it uh not only am i going back into the memory of when i also worked on sets i did the grip and electric um but I'm just remembering of like this is where the magic is made. Like this is this is crazy how all the I actually have never been in post production. That might be the only thing that I've never seen, mm, even okay. remotely. Mm -hmm. Just like the editing side. Well, it but makes sense because anyway. like yeah, it's definitely like like I feel like the post production is kind of separate. Like it, it is all part of the same project, but like in terms of like everyone working as a team to make the filming happen. Uh like post production is like kind of a separate thing. So that makes sense to me. Um but okay, I want to transition into uh more story kind of abstract questions if you're down. Um so I will start with this one cuz I 
Uh, Kai mentioned that you've been an extra before. Mm -hmm. um, so I had a question for you about that. I was wondering um, how can ex how can extras impact the story of something, if at all? Um, and are extras important for the overall narrative, or where do you think extras kind of lie in affecting the story or anything? Do you think that they they have that kind of impact or can or uh, when you're an extra, like, how do you feel about that whole situation? Yes, yes, yes. Extras are important, man. I will drill that point in. Um, yeah, I, I actually like started out as an extra. That's kind of how I got, um, other jobs, but, cool, yeah. um, sticking, sticking to the, the point though here is, um, they are so important to film and people don't realize that, um, I, I do understand though people that do have experience as an extra will come in and they're like, am I even on camera? Oh my gosh, we have to wait for so long. Mm -hmm. Am I, you know, and it can be a very frustrating experience, but um, without extras, the, the whole scene would look like a ghost town. And that would reflect in the movie that you see. Like if, mm -hmm. if, if let's say, I'm a director and I just say, I'm going to try to do this whole thing uh, without any people in the background. You'd be watching my movie and something would feel off. Um, you, you'd be like, what is going on? And then you wouldn't be focused on the art form because, you know, there's this peculiar, weird feeling of, of not having people there. So it is so important to like fill that frame and make it feel like more lively and like a part of an actual human story. Um, and so I, I think that, um, unfortunately sometimes on set, like extras aren't treated the most amazing. Um, and so I think like personally for the, the film world, that's something that we could work on is, is, um, making sure that extras do feel like they are important because they are, and they, um, really help sell that this world that the director and, um, that the filmmakers are creating. And so, yeah, yeah. that's my, my consent. That's a great answer. I, uh, yeah, you've definitely like sold it to me a little bit. Cause I was a little unsure, right? I was like, mm -hmm. you know, are the, the extras really impact the story? But the more you explain it, the more I'm like, that it really is important. Cause like when you experience a story, like the goal is to kind of like get lost in it a little bit, you know, like the, the level of immersion affects like how deeply you're able to connect with the story and without those extras you can't really connect as easily like you said there's gonna be that disconnect where you're like mm -hmm. maybe this isn't a real thing you know it's like even when you're watching like lord of the rings or something like there's that level of like believability to it where you're like this could be a real place even though it's fictional um but i think the extras really do help with that and i you know i'm uh, thank you to, for validating all of the extras out there that may be listening yeah. that are, need need a little <laughs> boost, need a little confidence. <laughs> thank boost. you, extras. You guys are you guys are making it happen. Uh, but yeah, yeah. And Maybe so we feel... should get some extras. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> we do. We have a guest know, right now. We, we have a guest right now. We we we, we got. Yeah, but is that an extra? Or are you like? Well, I'm not saying she's an extra. Uh, but I'm just. Well, she used to be an extra, so in a way. But today she's our special. Yeah, guest. that's true. Do it oh, <laughs> okay, Kai. You know, it's, is it's good sometimes get back into. It. So that that actually does remind me. Uh, you asked if I was done with my questions, and I thought I was, and then another one came up. Oh, um, so, <laughs> uh, is it typical to get into the industry through doing extras, or like, how do you? Where do you even begin? Because like the only way I was able to know to get in is because I knew somebody. I mean, that's a good that, question. That's like, a great question, Kai. So like, how do you get into the industry? Are there multiple ways? Are there typical ways of doing it? Is there a preferred way to do it? You know, you you kind of hit the nail on the head. There there is no typical way. Like I, you know, when I was getting started in it, I asked that same question. I was like, how do you get into this? Like, and I would ask people and I would always get a different answer from people. Um, but the, the main thing that I hear is um, you, it, it really is those connections and those people, you know. So I think in getting into the industry, if you know somebody who is in the industry, take full advantage of that. <laughs> like ask 
you know, if there's something that you can do, uh, like, hey, man, what projects do you have coming up? Um, that sort of thing, because that's what will get you in like volunteering and stuff. I had to do so much volunteering. In fact, like I still do volunteering um, because there's so much to learn. And when I feel like, okay, I don't have a full grasp on this thing that I want to learn or um, or maybe I just just want to get more connections. You know, I'll reach out to people and I'll say, hey, I'm willing to volunteer. I'm willing to come in and do this. And that will get the ball rolling for the rest of the projects that you end up doing. I met Garrett Batty um, based off of just a volunteer project. And since then I've gotten two fully paid jobs from him. And so really just making those connections and um, being willing to work and to get uh, to a good place where people kind of like know who you are, they know your passion, they know you're willing to work. Um, that's what really connects you to the next set and people people remember you and people you know want to bring you back and especially here in Utah like we're a pretty tight-knit community you know there's not film is growing here but there's not a ton of people in film so I often see the same people that I saw on the last set on this new set and so it's kind of a fun little thing that uh you know the more people you know and connect with you just kind of grow and learn with them and um yeah yeah so basically just taking advantage of every little opportunity is normally how how people really get started interesting interesting so i something that you said kind of strikes me not as like a cautionary thing but as something to consider is that there's there's like an upfront in not really a cost but just like an upfront investment yeah. that comes with it you kind of have to invest your time in first for it to really have returns to be able to work on set does yeah that make that sense? Be, yeah no it does that can be the rough like thing about um film and uh see it, it's a positive and a negative at the same time because yes it can be grueling it can be hard to to get started um but it also sometimes helps kind of weed out the people who um, only just are there for a paycheck and only are just there because, well, because I have to, or, you know, like it, it really kind of goes to show, like, if you are willing to do some of the hard work up front, um, then you get your reward, you know, then you start getting uh, those paid jobs, then you start getting known and uh, you get random texts from people. Hey, I'm the AD on this, or I'm the person for this. Do you want to come work for me? <laughs> and so, you know, I'm starting, I'm at the point where I'm starting to get those random texts from people I have never met before. And it's just because I've worked with people who know me. And so they will mention them to this person who mentions them to this person. And so, you know, when you get your name out there, uh, you end up just getting more opportunities and, more fun things to work on because you did some of that grueling work up front so gotcha yeah. it's like a double-edged sword but better yeah <laughs> yeah um i think it's interesting um because I, I i do agree with you that connections are i think typically how you get started in a lot of careers you need to like know somebody i mean that's why there's like job fairs and things and whatnot but like you know there are uh you know uh i can't what are they called the uh, interviews you can do there's interviewing processes and then you know i like do actors still do auditions is our auditions a thing because uh yeah. I, I i feel like that's that's a side of it that maybe you can get into without a connection um maybe uh but I, like especially in the production side it makes sense to me that you would need to know somebody kind of especially in a smaller uh industry but I, I do, I, I like what you said about the create, the creative side, um, or not the creative side, but the, the whole, like people that aren't dedicated, it kind of weeds them out because mm -hmm. I think that's totally true when you're working on something that's very, it's like a creative endeavor. I feel like you, I, I almost feel like create creativity needs like passion and, uh, motivation behind it to really work. So I, I feel like a lot of people that just want to make a paycheck and they just want to clock in and clock out. Um, and not really use their brain, like they're never going to be doing creative projects. So 
Um, right. Yeah. Like, those it, have- yeah. So it's like, it, I think it's really cool that, you know, if you're working in the creative industry, you're going to meet people who are like-minded and have that, that passion for creativity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very intriguing. True. Well, that answered the the get into the industry question. Thank you for uh, kind of spelling that out. Um, yeah, I hope that helps. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's interesting because it's like as you're saying it, you're showing the worth of what that upfront work is, and it's like, yeah, I'm inspired. Uh, if I can get a couple of my other projects out of the way, like, yeah, I'd do that. That sounds interesting. Mm-hmm. That sounds so cool. So anyway. All right, are we ready to move on to the next question? Indeed. Indeed. Okay, um, so the next question I have is, what role does a cameraman slash woman play in adding to the story of what they're filming? That's great. Yeah, um, so there's a whole camera department, and um, I'll just briefly kind of go over what they are. Um, So you have the DP which I mentioned earlier, it just means director of photography or um, people will, will more so know it as like the cinematographer. So um, he's the one talking to the, the director or um, yeah, mostly the director and they're, they're very much in the creative realm of things, um, you know, figuring out, uh, you know, like they have a shot list and stuff before right. of just the different um shots they're going to get for this scene the different angles the different um you know like how are we going to shoot this scene sort of deal so that's the dp um and then you have the first ac and second ac and then you have the cam op camera operator um wait wait cam mop yeah short for camera operator i see i see like camera okay it's not a mop it's yeah, I heard mop. You don't think I'm like mop to the mop. camera? Okay. They they really make sure the camera's clean. You know, they kind of they broom it <laughs> That's off. That's a really clean camera. <laughs> yeah, they're just like spraying it with like Febreze. Don't don't do that to your camera, guys. Um, but okay, cam mop. Please continue. Yeah, yeah. So um, I think what your question leans to more uh, more so to the the DP. It sounds like right, the, like the creative, um decision making of the shot right right yeah i mean it's a little bit of both right but it's like because like you have the the shot and then you have the person that's gonna like capture that shot um Mm -hmm. but but i I mean like because i was thinking of you know back when we were filming youtube videos and even just like um when you when you film like when you were doing your documentary per se like you don't have this full team but like someone who is behind the camera like what are they adding to the story if anything right like Mm-hmm. you know is is it like how essential is that role um in like like uplifting the narrative very essential and you know like every uh job on that team is very important too uh because you know the the dp you know they're they are in charge of you know that creativity like okay let's do a low angle so this person looks bigger and greater mm-hmm. you know so okay. decisions like that um and then uh, the camera operator, and I can't remember if it's the first AC or the second AC, um, but one of them does the focus. And so, like, the big part of their entire job is just making sure that uh, whatever the subject is, it's in focus. And, you know, as the camera moves, they're moving that little ring, making sure that everything is crisp and clear. Um, and then there's also the slate. And what the slate is, is the uh, the little thing that you'll see in behind the scenes, it's that little and action, you know, they'll do the mm, yes. little, yep. the little snap. Yeah. Like, and uh, yep. what, what that does is that helps in editing. Um, so, you know, in editing, they'll, they'll be able to organize that a lot better and see what scene it is, which take this is. Um, and that little snap um, syncs it to audio. Yeah. It's so, for audio. I was going to say, cause uh i i used to clap back when i first started editing mm-hmm. we would do we would do like little clap to like be like okay this is this is where the audio lines up um mm-hmm. which i i never knew that beforehand so like that's so cool like it has so many uses the little what'd you call it the uh, the slate the slate yeah see, that's so cool 
Um, yeah. so, so fascinating. There's there's like jobs that are so they don't they they're so minute and so specific. Like mm -hmm. the the focus thing when you're talking about that, I think that's your entire job is just to stare at a screen and like make sure nothing gets blurry. You know, or not mm -hmm. the intended things get blurry. And it's so specific. Uh, like, it makes me interested to be like, you can't really scratch any of these departments off or else you lose the magic of the of the movie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It really all has to be there. It's so intriguing. So, yeah, yeah. I, I really liked what you said. Uh, and, and I didn't know if you had anything else to say about the camera. Um, no, that's pretty much it. But I love what you said about like the low shot uh, making the guy look big because I feel like that ultimately captures like the importance of like what the cameraman's really doing because uh you know i'm not sure like, and this could be different but I, th I feel like for myself personally if at least at my current point in time creatively if i were to like write a story out and i wanted to turn it into a movie i would have no idea what kind of shots to like do to kind of capture the emotion but like yeah. if, you, if you talk to anybody who's experienced uh at doing that stuff they would know right away uh, like if you do this angle it like maybe like helps create this emotion or if you do this angle it kind of helps you know uh put this guy into the the forefront so like he's like the, the main focus of the scene or whatever and it, it's crazy it's a whole art form uh mm -hmm. that i feel like is completely lo looked over sometimes um there are so. tons of those little tips and tricks that you know dps or cinematographers are are very familiar with uh, like how to manipulate the frame and how to like how do we convey this emotion or convey this feeling that characters are going through and mm -hmm. and that's why they they talk a lot with the director too right is because right. they're trying to figure out okay like this is our character this is where they are in the frame like how how is the character feeling at this point you know sometimes they'll be close in because they want them to feel you know claustrophobic or right. you know, sometimes there's uh, what's called frame within a frame where you know something like picture maybe an arch or something and the characters in the middle like there are mm -hmm. just different things that convey different feelings and moods and emotions um like within the frame that you just uh that, that you catch on to as a viewer even though you don't like know what you're seeing it's so cool because there's this subconscious feeling while you're watching the movie and you're watching this scene or this thing that's happening and yeah. you you start to really capture that feeling that the DP worked on, or and and you you don't know why you're feeling this way, but the frame kind of shows it that way, and it's just a very unique, cool job. That, yeah, yeah. Fun to dive into you, a little. Yeah, um, you're making me think of uh, horror movies because I know that their horror movies use specific camera angles that just make you uncomfortable, you know, or like they just give you that uneasy feeling like maybe the camera's tilted a little bit maybe the the way that they're like showing certain doors or you know like i know that like there's so many different ways to to do that but you know it just goes to show that what you're saying is absolutely true um and at the end of the day you know uh when you're making like a, like telling a story right like i think this goes back to what me and kai talked about in, like the first episode of this podcast where telling a story is literally like you just trying to convey your experiences and emotion in a way to where someone else can experience it. Um, so like, right. yeah, at the end of the day, like that's exactly what everyone's doing here. But what's interesting about movies as a whole is just like, it's not one person, but it's, you know, I, and with like YouTube, of course, there's some people that do do stuff all by themselves. Uh, like bless their soul, you know, like that's, that's some hard work right there. But, mm -hmm. but when you have these giant productions, it's like, how can I take this, idea i have in my head but then i have to like translate it onto like words and then i have to translate that through someone else who can do something that i'm not like a professional in it's like it's like going through like you're like filtering this idea through like five different people to make it happen um or more like it could be so many people but like five different steps or more and uh it's almost like a collaborative effort where like i don't know i like i I guess th that could be a follow-up question where it's like how do you feel about uh handing stories off to other people and like trusting them to get the same uh vision and emotion that the original person had onto the next person and 
like the finished product and how everything turns out like what are your thoughts on on that kind of of a transformative experience for storytelling yeah um first thing i was gonna say was uh have you ever seen the credits roll after a movie there are so many names yes there are so many it's totally true (laughs) I don't think so about that, just, but you're right. Yeah. It just it just goes to show how many people really, you know, like work on a movie and it's so many people. And um it's like Kai was saying earlier, like there are like little jobs that like th- you know, when you look at it, when you really dive into it, you're like, oh, well, that's all they do. And I had that experience on set. I'm like, wait, that's that's really all they do. Like, <laughs> I was surprised that the director only really talks to the actors and the DP. He doesn't talk to the rest of the crew very much. And and so my my feelings on that was like, is that it? What? That doesn't seem like a lot. But right. uh, when you do go on set, you realize how stressed everybody is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're like, everybody does have a very specific job, but it's so important that they are able to you know have all their focus on that one thing. Um, and sorry, that's a bit of a tangent. But, no, it's all good. Um, uh, sorry, your question was about um, kind of like repeat it again. I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah. Just to make if, it, if I'm understanding it, it's like, how do you feel? It, like as a director, it seems like you would have to entrust your story to other people. And like, how does that? How would it feel to do yeah, that? Yeah, it's is like that the question. Yeah, you're like handing your story off to different people to make it happen because like mm-hmm. these things are such a collaborative effort. Like. A, most of these movies that you're watching can't be done by one person. It has to be done by hundreds or, or more. Like you're, you're trusting all of these people to like have that same vision to make the finished product, like that original story you had in your heart, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so I was just asking you kind of like, cause you've seen it firsthand. Like what are your thoughts on maybe like uh, one person sharing one story like themselves, like it's coming directly from them versus kind of like this huge collaborative like relay race kind of deal right so it's definitely this huge balancing act and um on set you see it a lot whether it's working or whether it's not and so it can be it can be a really fine line because um when people are um really stubborn and it's um it's my way or no way Um, Mm. and everybody's like that on set things don't work and things don't move and people get frustrated and um, when that sort of thing happens um, the finished product just sucks like it doesn't um, look or feel right and um, I have the argument of you can always tell when you're watching a movie or when you're watching even if it's a commercial or something um, I feel like there's always this underlying feeling that you can tell if the um, crew got along or not because you know you do your best work when you feel motivated and you feel um very excited to be around the people that you're around and that shows in your media you know um and so i i think um when you're talking like it makes me think that and i'm coming up with this on the spot film is kind of like a marriage right it's like (laughs) Everybody <laughs> is trying to make it work. We're trying to accommodate um, the camera people. We're trying to accommodate the art people. We're trying to accommodate, you know, everyone is um, working in sync and trying to help for the benefit of the whole uh, movie or goal in the, in the last place. Uh, I don't know if that sentence make, made sense, but uh, yeah, that's I really yeah. like that. I like the way you you, you kind of said that with that, especially the thought that everyone there is like just a small piece of trying to make a a one big great whole piece thing. Because mm-hmm. like yeah. uh, I think that ties in very well with what you mentioned of like you kind of need to weed out i can see now why you would need to weed out the people that might not be so invested because Mm -hmm. it really does just require such a high investment of on everyone's part to make it to make it work yeah um and on kind of what you said about like the director being surprised like kind of being surprised he didn't talk to too many people I uh, I remember going on set and thinking the director hated my guts. Like I I seriously <laughs> thought 
that he would like hated me because he would never talk to me. And now that you tell me kind of, I, I, I have a much better understanding after this interview of like what the director does. And I'm yeah. kind of like, yeah, I don't think he hated me. I just think I was, I was just on a different piece of, of the, like he is a piece of the puzzle that's on the other side of the puzzle than what I am. Right. So mm -hmm. our interaction is just so scarce right. that it just doesn't matter. So it's like not he didn't really hate me. Um, so I that's hope not. It, I hope it's good. Hope it's a good healing. <laughs> I'm having these healing revelations. <laughs> that's that's, that's uh, great. I'm glad we can yeah. heal you. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. I, Thank you. I appreciate I that. To, <laughs> I had to uh, go tell a director something one time for the, like the first movie that I was on and I was like shaking in my boots I went up and like said it to him he didn't look at me didn't acknowledge me didn't say a word and I walked off from that like oh my gosh like I must have did something wrong uh like this is crazy like everybody hates me and that's that's not true um, the director is just so focused in on what he has to do and and everybody is and so um, you kind of learn that on set, like you don't take things personally. A lot of times people are, are stressed or they're trying to get their mm. job done. And yeah. so it's, um, it's more so like what's going on in their own head and not what's happening with you. And I, I learned later that he heard what I said. He just kind of like went, okay, check in his mind and then, you know, moved on. And so, um, it's yeah. just, you know, you don't take it personally. You just realize, Hey, like, they have a goal or we have a goal that we're there that we're working towards and um his mind's gonna be somewhere else and you know we have to just make it work and and figure things out you you really learn to roll with the punches on set and, mm. and figure mm. things out so yeah i like that like it seems like you have to adapt on the fly a lot um mm -hmm. but i feel like that's a really good skill to have and um you know you said in the beginning that you're constantly doing different stuff um so it seems like that'd be, I don't know, like, uh, you're gonna have to be adapting all the time, but that also sounds exciting for someone like me. I, I don't like doing the same thing every day. So definitely sounds mm -hmm. like an exciting time if you're into that kind of lifestyle. Yeah. It's part of the reason I love it for sure. Well, um, I thank you so much for painting this like very amazing picture of what I feel like. Not that I know the industry inside and out now, but I feel like at least everyone listening knows what to expect going into it. And I think that's awesome. That's that's exactly what we want out of this show. So um, yeah. we do have a couple of questions, more fun questions. These are questions that Logan and asked uh, sort of the two of us collectively uh, on our first episode yes about the, stories and i i think they're roots. pretty fun questions yeah okay um here how about you you do the first one i'll do the second one you do the third one excellent tag teaming it with yes. the one two combo yeah like, okay. a, like a marriage you know it's a <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know um <laughs> sure i guess as all a right. married individual i yeah. can't yeah necessarily <laughs> understand what Ka kai's kai's married so i i guess uh maybe uh Logan uh, well, rejected well, on live yeah, air. Yeah, I uh on live air. I mean, we've Sorry, on this man. train for a while. There's not really anybody else around most of the time, so uh I'll, I'll take We'll perfect our our marriage one two punch and we'll do it at weddings. We'll yeah. figure out what that means and <laughs> anyway. It's all right. I'll I'll get over uh, it. All right, first question. No, no. Well, okay, first question uh was uh, what is the first story you experienced kind of like in your lifetime that had an impact on you? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, the first one that comes to mind uh, when I hear that question is The Secret Life of Walter Mitty. And you'll hear that from more people than just me. That movie, okay. like, it's just very, um, I just remember it was one that I remember watching and like not knowing what I was feeling, but knowing that it like felt so like amazing and different and just like a cool movie. And, you know, like now that I've been more on this journey and I understand like, uh, like some cinematography things and some storytelling things, you know, like I can go back and piece some of the things that make more sense now. But 
um, it's just a movie that I was like, wow, this is just a good feel movie. Like, I, and, and this is kind of hmm. one of the movies that made me like be more interested in filmmaking and what it all meant. Yeah. Um, how old were you when you experienced it? Uh, it wasn't actually that long ago. It was probably, I was probably like, oh, interesting. when did that movie even come out? Um, I don't think I've heard of it, so I am interested. It's a. It came out early 2010s, I think. I heard of it, and I I never got to see it, but I definitely heard of it. It wasn't even 2010, I think, when I first saw it. I think I was like 18, maybe. So it wasn't okay. that that long ago. That so maybe it's not the first. I'm sure I have. Well, hey, uh, I think I think it's a completely from way earlier, it, but <laughs> yeah, it's a completely valid uh impact or a completely valid answer. Um, I I like that question because I. Uh, it really, I, I sat down and thought, I was like, when's the first time that I actually like experienced a story and was like, wait, stories are like a thing. And like, they're also like super moving. And mm-hmm. so like, you know, like, I, I feel like any, any answer works. You know, I feel like that's a great answer, um, especially if it had such a big impact on you that it's like why you're pursuing story, stories and creativity, like in the first place. Like if that's what really motivated you, I think that's awesome. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay. So the next one I have is pretty simple. Uh, but what is your favorite story of all time? Oh man, that's such a hard question. <laughs> and you could just pick one. You don't have to pick like the definitive answer. You could just be like, Yeah. What is the story? <laughs> yeah, this yeah. is the defining. <laughs> you can never. There's no backsies ever again after this. Whatever. You're locked <laughs> in. It's, it's locked just my in. Personality. It's everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man that's so hard ever putting you on the spot yeah i feel like i should have thought more about this question <laughs> oh wow the most say again the most um what, your favorite story of all time like the, the the goat the greatest of all time story in your eyes okay i'm gonna say a few because that's an unfair question Okay, I'll take it. I'll take um, it. Bang. Well, they're, they're, they're tied. They're tied. For... takes another L. No, no, no. They're tied for first. This is valid. Okay. 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 All right. So it's the the ones that I tend to lean to, um, especially in film and in movies, um, like are the ones that really touch my heart. Like those are the ones mm-hmm. that I'm like, you know, that I remember and, yes. I, and they stick with me. Um, so the ones that come to mind. Uh, are have you seen Hacksaw Ridge? I have not. Okay, that one. It's it's a World War II movie, and it's oh, based man. on a true story. And I won't spoil too much for you, but like it is just an incredible story, and um, it leans into themes about God, and yeah. it's just so so heartwarming. So I'd say that one's big on the list. Okay. Um, and then the other, I was thinking about another two. Um, and these ones are a flex because I've worked with the directors on oh, both snap. of these movies. Okay. Um, Saratov Approach, I mentioned earlier. Um, Garrett Batty's the director for that one. Right. Okay. It's about um, two missionaries who get kidnapped on their mission, and um, they end up escaping like alive and things. But uh, like their journey of of getting wait, married, you were on the Saratov Approach? No, 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 no. I've worked with the director. Uh, I wasn't I on see. that one. I that see. Yeah, I, I, it was under my impression that like, uh, wait, you worked on that? But yeah, that movie did uh, come out a while ago. I have heard of yeah. that one. I haven't seen it, but man, it's like that in the World War II one. I, can, I have seen that one. I can That's totally, a good one. I can totally see how those would have a big impact on whoever yeah. watches them. Like, those are very emotional and powerful movies. There was one more that was okay. Yes, mention. yes. <laughs> um, the other one, uh, the director's T.C. Christensen. He was the very first director that I ever like worked with on the movie um and this one's called cokeville miracle another one based on true story i have uh, seen that one as well yes yes great yes it's it's, um based on true story these uh this crazy couple goes into an elementary school and threatens to bomb it oh my Um, god and the the bomb ends up going off in this very tiny room and the bomb was created to like light the air on fire, like just make make sure that there's no survivors. And yet there were things that happened in this story that um, 
made sure that like the only people who died were the two perpetrators and every single child and teacher made it out of that building alive wow. and so that one just focuses on those miracles and things that happens so, wow. and you worked on that one those are the top or three. you've worked with that director i worked with the director unfortunately i haven't worked on those movies okay. although that okay. would be such a cool flex because those are my favorite movies <laughs> hey but you know the directors which means you're you're bound to make something just as good in the future hopefully you know? so, hopefully man that those that that was a great answer yeah. that was that was awesome um, those all seem very, very impactful. Thank you. They're definitely, in my memory, definitely tear jerkers. And really, I've never seen uh, Hacksaw Ridge, but I've seen the other two. And those are definitely, it'll, it'll hit you right in the feels. Yeah, it hits those feels, for sure. All right, Kai, we got one more question. I, okay, yeah. I, well, <laughs> when you were talking about the Sartov approach, I, thought you said you were in it and that gave me the impression of like you went to that was filmed in russia right <laughs> that was what I, I was like hold on wasn't that filmed in russia yeah uh, yeah part of it well i think they went to ukraine if i remember correctly mm. but um i i'm like best buds with oh them, okay because you know, i I ended up doing another job for Garrett where I uh, chauffeured the actors for the film fest. It was like the 10 year anniversary of that movie. So it was kind of cool. Cause I got to almost live as if I, you know, had, um, I don't know, just live with these actors, like live in the moment sort of deal. Cause uh, it was, it was the two Russian actors, the, the bad guys, I got to chauffeur them around and they were so much fun. I have their numbers now. We're Facebook friends, Instagram friends. So it's it's a good deal. <laughs> That's awesome. Wow. That's super cool. Okay. Uh, so the, the last question we have for you is, what is your favorite way to consume stories? So an example would be like, is it movies? Is it TV shows? Is it video games? Yeah. What's Man, the, okay. What's I'm, I'm going to keep medium? with the theme. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> Oh, you're good. I'm gonna keep with the theme. Movies, movies are really, I think, one of the the best mediums because um, not only are you you know hearing everything, but you're seeing everything. Like it's it's both. It's combining audio and visual, visual, and just really pulling you into that story. And so, yeah, I think I think movies. You, you However, know, I have been getting more into video games. Ooh, okay. Finding video games that have a good storyline is really cool, you know, especially because you're you're interacting with it. So, yeah, so I wouldn't diss on video games. <laughs> yeah, I, I was gonna say, um, I I, I should have seen this coming, you know. Of course, you're you're gonna say movies because that's like your life, <laughs> you know. But um, yeah, I think movies because this this is what I said back in the first. Uh, the first episode when we were talking about this is I think movies are currently like the did I say movies are currently the best or maybe I I because I'm a huge anime watcher, um, which it falls more along the lines of like TV shows and I I really like long form storytelling but I do think that like if you're gonna go to the movie theater like that is like the cream of the crop in terms of like being able to really like sit down and watch something like that it's like the best experience you're gonna get. Um, mm -hmm. in terms of like the audio and the visuals and everything. Um, but I do think that, as you said, video games have like s this untapped potential to be like oh, the, definitely. the best way to consume a story because like you're actually controlling, like you're interacting with it. You're not just like seeing it as a bystander, like you're, you're in it, you know? So I think that has some crazy, potential. you know, uh, just the random thought came to me. It was like when movies became like a new concept did did people scrutinize sc uh, scrutinize them as much as they did video games because when video games came out they're like it'll rot your brain yeah, i'm sure it'll, it'll kill you it's like as bad as a cigarette uh, did people say that about movies i don't know dude i, I think at one point books were being slandered for like <clears throat> like rom like i don't uh, know like maybe, maybe romance novels and fiction novels like oh the, those kids are rotting their brains reading about forest elves or something <laughs> i think every new thing is uh, slandered at some point yeah that's uh, very fair but very fair i mean and that's the thing is it's it's hard because uh, this has always been my impression is it's like it's hard to take an entire genre of something uh and be like 
and when I say genre, I mean like different mediums, right? So video games and movies, like because, like I said, it's a it's a literal expression of your experiences and like all this stuff. Like, so if if you experience a movie that's just like complete garbage, or maybe it has some terrible lessons to learn, or it's just like a nothing, you know, a, a nothing burger, you know, like a popcorn flick or whatever, like it's like it's a medium it's it, it's a platform to allow people to share their experiences that doesn't mean they're all going to be good it doesn't mean they're all going to be bad so i don't think any any medium is inherently good or bad it's what you do with it um that you know reflects that so yeah that's poetic man that's oh, great thank you um we can uh engrave that on a on the train too yeah that'll be on the back of the shirt the front's gonna say uh the <laughs> I forget already, but we need that. that. You tell a <laughs> story. Three story three yeah, time. you tell a story three times. Okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> See, we're gonna make this. We're gonna make this happen. Well, thank you so much, Lauren, for being on the podcast with us. Um, how do people find you if they want to see some of your stuff? They're gonna find me, or they gonna stalk me? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh... I was like, no, wait, what? <laughs> like, <ugh." laughs> Well, I'm not telling you where I live. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, I'm, I kind of bounce around on different projects. I don't have a, um, any company by any means right now. Um, but hey, you can follow me on Instagram, at Blaney Lauren. <laughs> nice. There you go. Yeah, it's been such a That's pleasure talking the place. with you. That's the place to be. The mm-hmm. place. But yeah, thanks for joining us on our train. Uh, I hope you've had a good time. It's been wonderful talking about stories. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. This yeah. was so much fun. And you guys have so many cool ideas and you guys, um, you really know your topics. It's really cool to see you guys talk about um, what, you know, really matters to you and what uh, personally, like things that have affected you. It's just, it's really cool. I like what you guys are doing. Oh man, thanks. I wasn't expecting the compliment. Oh, thanks. Oh. Oh boy! It's we got hit with the guest one-two combo. Pulled yeah. pulled a knockout. Yeah, after that, I, I completely forgot. I got rejected. You know, it's a, it's a good day. <laughs> uh, well, uh, that will do it for Story Dive today. Um, thank you so much for listening, guys. If you enjoyed hearing about it. Um, please do follow we're gonna have a lot more interviews like this in the future a lot with a lot of different industries a lot of different mediums and who knows maybe we'll see lauren again in in a a while when she's like the big wig after she makes her own movie we'll get her back on (laughs) and uh (laughs) yeah uh, yeah it's it's awesome to have guests on you know it's been kind of lonely here with just two of us I'm glad I can join Not to you. say Just that like, you're only allowed to... We don't want to say you can't return until you make your own movie. No, that's no, not no. Quite... I realized that's what it sounded like for a second. And just no, I'm just clarify. I'm just hyped, bro. I'm no, just no. hyped, you know? Like, let's make our dreams happen. You know, that kind of vibe. Thanks. Yeah. But, but yeah, we're going to get more know. guests on, for sure. I hope I return and I'm like the super successful <laughs> a filmmaker. Yeah. Just like, hey guys, remember when I did this movie? <laughs> yeah, well, we yeah, believe in you. That'd be cool. 100%. <laughs> um, yeah, well, so with that, uh, give give a like, give a follow, tell people about it, especially if you know anyone that's interested in movies. This is the episode. This is where to send them. So yes. Spread the word. Story dive. And with that, we will take our adieu until next time dear listeners bye